The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. After all is said and done, the reason you or anybody else smokes a cigarette can be summed up in one word, enjoyment. And certainly, the enjoyment you get depends entirely on the taste of a cigarette. Put it this way. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. Well, the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Here's why Lucky's taste better. First, they're made of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Second, Lucky's are actually made better. Made round firm, fully packed, to always draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette gives you better taste every single time. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is Lucky's taste better. You'll know that's true the minute you light up a Lucky. So next time you're shopping for cigarettes, get the carton with the red bull's eye, Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, today, February 14th, is Valentine's Day. It's also the birthday of the star of our show. So here he is, our own little Valentine, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, that was very nice of you to remember my birthday. How did you ever think of it? Well, Jack, a strange thing happened last night. I ate at that Chinese restaurant you recommended. Uh-huh. And I broke open one of those rice fortune cakes. Uh-huh. And a little paper said, "'Tis better to give than to receive, and Sunday is Jack Benny's birthday." <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what did you uh, bring me for a present, Don? Well, it was too late to go shopping, so I brought you a pocket full of fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> Too late to go shopping. I told you to have lunch there, not dinner. <laughs> anyway, Don, I'll take the rice. There's a friend of mine getting married Wednesday. Jack, you can't throw this rice. It's fried. So's my friend. It's Remley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Don, thanks very much. Well, anyway, Jack, getting back to your birthday. Tell me, how does it feel being a year older? Don, I don't know. It seems strange to advance another year. But then, on the other hand, there's something exciting about reaching 40. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Jack, you may be 40, but I must say you look much younger. <laughs> well, Don, it, it's nice of you to say that, but let's face it. My age is beginning to show. A little wrinkle here, a gray hair there. Eh. <laughs> Time marches on. Now, let's get on with the program. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Jack. Before we get into the show, I have a little surprise for you. A surprise, Don? Yeah, the whole audience is going to join in. All right, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Happy birthday to you. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much. Wasn't that nice, Jack? Yes, very nice, Don. But, uh, but... Uh, but what? Well, I was watching one fellow sitting in the front row, and he didn't sing at all. As a matter of fact, he had a frown on his face. And I'm just curious to know why. Oh, mister. Mister. Me? <laughs> yeah, would you mind coming up here on the stage for a minute? Okay. 
Now look, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fink. <laughs> F I N Q U E, Fink. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, Mr. Fink, I'm just curious to know, you were the only one who didn't sing happy birthday to me. Why was that? Do you sing to me on my birthday? <laughs> no, no, but then how can I? I don't even know when your birthday is. It's December the 24th, and all you hear people singing is jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Not one word about Fink. <laughs> Well, that's too bad. Now, look, uh, Mr. Fink. F-I-N-Q-U-E. <laughs> I, I know, I know. That, that's French. <laughs> yes, yes. In Paris, it's Fink A. <laughs> well, you certainly are. <laughs> And I don't care what it is. All I want to know is if you've got this chip on your shoulder, why did you come in here in the first place? Who wanted to come in? I was standing in line for the Amos and Andy show. <laughs> and some guy come over and he told me they was giving away refrigerators in here. <laughs> giving away refrigerators? In radio or programs, you either got to give you entertainment or a refrigerator. Now, where's my icebox? <laughs> You're not getting an ice box, so go sit down. Okay, okay. Twelve programs this week. I still ain't got a stick of furniture. <laughs> Keep quiet, please, Mr. Fink. <laughs> now, Don, regardless of what just happened, I... Oh, hello, Dennis. You're just in time for your song. Oh, I'd have been here sooner, but on the way down, I had to stop off at our family doctor's office and punch him in the nose. <laughs> You punched your doctor in the nose? He had it coming. My mother told me what he did. What? Well, when I was born, for no reason at all, he slapped me. <laughs> Dennis. And my back was turned, too. <laughs> Dennis, never mind that silly talk. Let's have your song. Okay, Mr. Benny, but first, uh, congratulations on your birthday. Oh, well, it's awfully sweet of you to remember it, kid. I never would have thought of it if you hadn't given me that ticket to the burlesque show last night. Uh, never mind, Dennis. What'd the burlesque show have to do with it? Well, a girl came out to do a dance, her bubble broke, and a sign fell out saying, Sunday is Jack Benny's birthday. <laughs> Dennis. You must be popular. What applause you got! <laughs> All right, all right. They whistled and everything. <laughs> Daddy, what a fuss over a man's birthday. Look, Dennis, you found out it was my birthday. That's all that matters. Now, come on, let's have your song. Okay. Gee, when I'm 40, I hope I don't look like him. <laughs> what did you say? You sing, Dennis. You said it. <laughs> Wonderful you are, and 
an open door and my secret love no secret Secret, secret love sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. That was wonderful. Congratulations on your birthday. <laughs> Dennis, you congratulated me already. Forget it. I tried, but I can't get that bubble dancer out of my mind. <laughs> Force yourself. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Benny, it must be nice to have your birthday uh, come on Valentine's Day. Yes, kid, but there's only one thing against it. Yeah? I mean, so many famous people were born in the month of February. Longfellow, Lincoln, Washington, at... It makes it hard for me to be outstanding. I can imagine. Of course, I, I don't want you to think for a minute that I'm comparing myself to a man like Washington. Why not? He wore a wig, too. <laughs> very clever. Very clever. Did you make up that joke yourself, Dennis? Uh-huh. And you like that type of joke? Yeah, I thought it was very funny. Oh, you did? <laughs> you thought it was funny, huh? Well, excuse me a minute. Hello? Kenny Baker? <laughs> Come home, all is forgiven. <laughs> You better watch it, Dennis. Another gag like that, and you'll only have one show. <laughs> and another thing. Say, Jack. Yes, Bob? Well, look, I didn't want to interrupt anything, but I've got a little present for you from the boys in the band. Oh, well, this is really too much. To think that the boys in your orchestra would remember my birthday. I mean, with all their other worries and, and responsibilities. <laughs> well, Remley was the one. Oh, Remley, huh? Uh-huh. Funny thing happened. Last night, Frankie was in a bar, and he happened to look up and he saw a little sign that said, Tomorrow is Jack Benny's birthday. Bob, that was written on the ceiling? No, under the table. <laughs> I put it there on purpose. I knew he'd see it. <laughs> anyway, Jack, all the boys chipped in, and they appointed Bagby, the piano player, to go out and buy you a plaque. And they asked me to present it to you. So, Jack, on behalf of the boys in the orchestra, here you are. Well, that's very nice of them. Gee, it's a fancy plaque, too. Let me read the inscription. To Herman Heffelfinger, <laughs> champion bowler, anthracite miners tournament. <laughs> Bob, what's the matter with Bagby? I mean, why would he get me a plaque like that? Well, you don't have much choice when you deal with a second story, man. <laughs> Wait, you mean Charlie buys stolen merchandise? Well, sometimes he buys, sometimes he sells. <laughs> I, I, I can't understand Bagby. There are so many decent, honest businessmen around. Why does Charlie have to buy from a burglar? He gives green stamps. <laughs> well, Bob, I'm not accepting a hot plan. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Benny. <laughs> That bubble dancer is driving me nuts. <laughs> Dennis, go sit down. Now, let's get on with the program. Oh, say, Jack, before you go any further, I think it's time for a song by the quartet. Oh, yes, that's right. Are the sportsmen here? Yeah. Come on in, fellas. Uh, Jack, the boys want to dedicate this number to you on the happy occasion of your birthday because this song's been associated with you for years. Well, that's very nice, Don. And, Jack, there's a part in it where you play the violin right at the opening. Oh, Don, do I have to? No. <laughs> well, I'm going to. It's my birthday. <laughs> now, wait till I get the music stand up here. Say, Bob, can I get a violin from one of the boys in the band? Well, I don't know about a violin, but Bagby will make you a good deal on a hot Cadillac. <laughs> I don't want that. I want a violin. Larry, let me have your violin, will you? Thanks. Hmm. What a gang in the orchestra. When they say that Remley is playing a steel guitar, you can take that word either way. 
Where's that violin? All right, Don, I'm ready. You want me to take the opening, huh? Well, boys, thanks very much. You know, Don, it was so nice of the quartet. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Oh, here I am, boy. Yeah. I hear, boy, boy, here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a dollar. A whole dollar. Thanks, Mr. Benny. I wonder who could be sending me a telegram right in the middle. Come in. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Benny. What do you want now? I forgot my bicycle. You didn't forget it. I bought it. <laughs> now, goodbye. I hate when a guy makes a deal and then tries to get out of it. <laughs> See, the, the telegram's from my sister, Florence. Oh, what did she say? She says, Dear Jack, I've been listening to your program, and I thought I should send you this wire immediately. You're not 40 years old today. You're actually... Oh, no. <laughs> no, this can't be. This is awful. Well, Jack, how old does your sister say you are today? 39. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, this is embarrassing. But my sister Florence ought to know. I guess instead of being born in 1914, it was 1915. I'm going to call Rochester and have him look at my birth certificate. 
My sister Florence says I'm 39, and I think I'm 40. I gotta find out. Say, Mabel. <laughs> what is it, Gertrude? Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah. I wonder what Collier's cover girl wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. I'll call your house immediately. He wants I should get him Rochester. Well, be nice to him. You know, today's his birthday. It is? How did you find out? Dial Ulrich 8900. <laughs> yeah, but how did dial, you... Dial, dial. Okay. The time is 4.21 and 10 seconds. And today is Jack Benny's birthday. <laughs> The time is 4.21 and 20 seconds. His shirt size is 15 and a half. <laughs> the time is... How do you like that? Imagine Benny having his birthday announced on the telephone. How does he get away with it? He used to be a personal friend of Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> But with all the advertising, he must be getting a lot of gifts. I can imagine. What did you send him? A beautiful calfskin glove. One glove? Why in the world would you give him only one glove? That's all he needs. He never takes his right hand out of his pocket. <laughs> Very true. Say, Gertrude, can you give me a lift home tonight? I guess so. What's wrong? I got another flat tire. Gee, you've been having more trouble with that motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Operator. Operator. Gertrude, get me my hole. I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, you ought to know. You helped build it. <laughs> Julius Caesar. <laughs> Never mind. Now, please ring my home. Okay, okay. I'm ringing it. Hmm. Smart Alec Gertrude. She takes you out for dinner once. She thinks she owns you. <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, radio, television, and silent picture. <laughs> Rochester, it's me. Oh, 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 hello, boss. What took you so long to answer the phone? Well, today's your birthday, and I was out in the kitchen finishing your cake. Oh, you baked a cake for me? Yeah, and you ought to see it, boss. Across the top in whipped cream, I wrote, Happy Birthday. Oh, that's nice, Rochester. Uh, oh, by the way, how many peas in happy? <laughs> Two. Uh-oh. Oh, so you'll have to add one. I gotta take one off. I got three. <laughs> well, look, at you can do that later. Now, Rochester, here's why I called you. I don't know what to do. I thought today was my 40th birthday, but I just got a wire from my sister, and she says I'm 39. Well, don't argue with her, boss. Grab it. <laughs> Rochester, I gotta be honest with myself. Now, I want you to look at my birth certificate and tell me the date on it. Your birth certificate? Yes, do you know where it is? It's right here on the desk. What's my birth certificate doing on the desk? You got it out the other day when you applied for your old age pension. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just did that for a gag. Well, it must be laughing your first check came today. <laughs> Rochester, stop making things up. Now, look at my birth certificate. I'm looking at it. Now, in the space where it says date of birth, what's there? A hole. <laughs> A hole in the paper? Yeah, we erased it once too often. <laughs> oh, well, 
Then there's nothing I can do, and I'll have to take my sister's word for it. I guess so, boss. Your sister must be right. Yep, I guess I'm 39. Well, goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. <laughs> what? Aren't we devils? <laughs> you and me? No, me and your sister. <laughs> Rochester. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the only one who's celebrating a birthday. Last week, more than 3,300,000 scouts and leaders of the Boy Scouts of America had a candle lighting job on their hands. It was the beginning of Boy Scout Week, and these scouts added the 44th candle to their birthday cake. Candles that, through the years, have lighted boyhood's path to manhood, brightening the way with fun and fellowship, guiding boys to a future of good citizenship. And ladies and gentlemen, today's scouts are tomorrow's citizens. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. You know, you can count on American college students to know a good thing when they see it. A survey made in 1952 of smokers in leading colleges showed that Luckies were the favorites in those colleges. Well, last year, another survey was made. It was nationwide, supervised by college professors and representative of all students in regular colleges from coast to coast. Based on 31,000 actual student interviews, the survey shows that Luckies lead again, lead over all other brands, regular or king size, and by a wide margin. Lucky's better taste was the reason given most often. When you come right down to it, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Taste better because they're made of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then Lucky's are made better. So make that next carton Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Come on, Don. The car's right around the corner. I'll drive you home. Okay. You know, Don, that was a pretty good program we just did, but hey, I Benny, think... Hey, Benny! Benny! Huh? Oh, it's you, Mr. Fink. Yeah. Hey, don't you know some program I can go on and win a refrigerator? No, I don't. Come on, Don. Well, I'm going to get a refrigerator even if I have to buy one. Well, I don't care... Buy one? <laughs> get in the car, Mr. Fink. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Blackberry program is written by Sam Perrin, Bill Josephsburg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs> You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>